You're looking at Sirius B, a small white dwarf star relatively close to our planet and relatively close to our solar system. What is about to happen to it is what we refer to as Type 1 Supernova. It is a white dwarf that's about to explode because it's acquired too much mass from the outside. Now, why are we doing this? Because for a simple reason. I actually wanted to explore the idea of supernova causing a, a catastrophe on our planet and possibly causing a mass extinction. Let's talk about this in a little bit more detail and welcome to What The Math. And first of all, unfortunately, there aren't that many simulations where we actually get to create a supernova in this game, but the ones that we have are kind of cool. There's actually this one right here that I haven't tried before, and that's a supernova in our solar system. It actually causes our sun to explode and creates this relatively cool effect, and let's actually see what happens to Earth. Now, in 1954, uh, scientists have actually um, hypothesized that uh, the huge mass extinction that happened 250 million years ago uh, that basically killed something like 90% of species on our planet may have actually been caused by a supernova. Uh, and the reason for that, well, you're about to see why. Um, and the thing is, it's actually the best explanation we have today as well. We don't really know why 90% of species suddenly died on our planet. Um, and uh, we still think that it's possibly because there was a supernova relatively close to our solar system, relatively close to Earth. And today, uh, mathematically, we've been able to estimate that uh, a supernova like that may actually happen every 800 million years. So we still have some time until the next one that may wipe out... There we go. There, there's the wiping out. Uh, wipe out the um, life on our planet. Uh, but the thing is, a much smaller supernova or a supernova that's a little bit farther away is very likely to happen not... Uh, not a very long time from now. As a matter of fact, the most recent supernova that was very likely observed, or at least uh, could have been observed um, from our planet, only happened about 150 years ago. And so there you have it. So let's talk about this phenomenon because right now, as you can see, Earth has nothing left on it. So if a supernova clo uh, happens relatively close to us, everybody will obviously die. Now, I actually wanted to use this uh, simulation as well because this is a, probably my favorite one called Supernova in the Galaxy. So here, you get to see the entire galaxy and we can kind of place um, our planet Earth not so close uh, so that we can see what happens to it if we place it a little bit farther away. As a matter of fact, I want to place it at a distance of about uh, 28.1 uh, um, or I guess close to, close to 28 light years or I guess a more rough estimate would be 8 parsec. Um, is what we call a kill distance. This is essentially a distance at which uh, we know for a fact that a supernova will most likely destroy the entire uh, life on our planet. If something within 8 parsecs will um, basically goes through a supernova, the particles, um, the super highly radioactive particles from the supernova will essentially strip our planet of everything on it and will destroy everything. Now, however, if something happens farther away, if it's over, um, I guess, 30 uh, light years away, if something goes through a supernova at, say, a distance of about 50 light years, uh, we should be fine in the sense that we're not going to experience um, an extinction event, but we'll still experience something. And this is where things get a little bit interesting, because very recently, on April 7th of 2016, there was a really cool paper uh, in Nature magazine about this. And so first, let's talk about what actually happens here and what uh, occurs when a supernova nearby us decides to reach our planet Earth. So I'm going to go into a different simulation. This time, let's actually just look at a simulation that has stars in it. Uh, there's one that's called um, nearest and brightest star. There you go. So here is a collection of stars. Some of them are relatively close. Some of them are relatively far away, up to um, a distance of, I think, think about uh, several hundred light years. So I think, yeah, the farthest star from us in this simulation is, I believe, oh, here's, there's some more here. Uh, so we have Deneb at over a thousand, possibly even uh, 2,000 light years away from us. And so some of these stars might one day uh, go supernova and create uh, this. So let's actually just choose one and make it go boom. If you know anything about this game, if you just start increasing mass and you set realistic mode uh, to turned on, this star will eventually go to supernova. There we go. So now this is a supernova. It's going to slowly 
uh, expand and make its way to our planet. Now, this distance here is just under 100 or so light years. I think it's about 100 light years. And so um, eventually, when this um, uh, material, which you'll see in a second, it's going to start expanding in a second. And I think there's actually going to be more supernova in a second because a lot of these stars will start coming closer and colliding with each other. Um, but let's just see what happens with this star known as 5 Alpha something beta, CR beta. I don't know what that stands for, but that's a star I've never heard of, but we have heard of it now because we just made it go boom. Um, if I wait for a few days, I guess if I wait for a few months even, or possibly years, um, we will start seeing the supernova expanding out of it. There you go. There, you can kind of see it. Let's go back to our planet for a second. Let's go back to our star. And so here's the sun, and if we look at it, there you go, you can kind of see it expanding now. This is about, I guess, 80 or so light years away from us, but at some point, this material will actually make its way to our solar system and will obviously um, affect Earth somehow. Now, what we've learned from this paper, and basically this is uh, two separate studies by two separate teams that discovered pretty much the same thing, at some point, um, this supernova, actually, you know, just for fun, I'm gonna make more. Let's just make more. Because this is this is where the fun comes in. Let's just make more. So here's another one here. There's going to be another one over there. And at some point, all of them will basically be making their way to um, to our home. And so what these two studies discovered is that on our planet Earth, which unfortunately we don't have here, but we can basically place it uh, orbiting around um, the sun here at the distance of about one astronomical unit. And here you go. Here comes the Earth. Earth is uh, right next to our sun. And um, so what we've, we've discovered from these two studies is that um, if you actually go around Earth and if you basically dig inside and look for, you know, fossils and stuff, at some point you discover a layer where there's a very, very big deposit of what's called iron 60. This is actually an isotope or um a type of iron that's usually not really found on Earth or found in very, very small quanti quantities on Earth, but it's very common inside the um, supernova. When the supernova happens, iron 60 is produced in massive amounts. And we've actually found these deposits at various layers on our planet. And what this suggests to scientists, because of the amount found, is that uh, it's very likely that at some point in history, these supernova happened very relatively close to us and then their emissions came to our planet, affected our planet, and deposited all of this iron stuff on the surface. Now, today we know that it, there's a few of them that occurred within the last 10 million years, and specifically we're looking at one occurring about 2.3 million years ago and one occurring about uh, 3.2 million years ago. So there's actually a very interesting sort of pattern where we know that uh, these particles at some point reached our planet and possibly did something to it. Now, these supernova don't seem to coincide with any sort of extinction events. I mean, uh, you know, no animal actually died from from these supernova because they were relatively far away. Specifically, I believe the first one that we did here was uh, about 80 light years away. But um, the one that we know occurred uh, most recently happened about 300 light years away. So if we go to a distance of about 300 light years, which is essentially somewhere over here. It's relatively far, as you can see. It's actually much, much farther away than these three supernovae I just sort of in initiated. And so at this distance, um, it's, you know, it, you don't expect things to really um, affect our planet that much, but uh, nevertheless, those particles still made it to our planet and were deposited on it. And so what these scientists started looking for is, well, did anything else happen during that time? Was anything else occurring at, you know, uh, something like 3.2 million years ago and also 1.5 million years ago? And they dis they've discovered something. As a matter of fact, it's something that uh, is very well known to um, geologists and um, very well known to people that are familiar with Earth. And specifically here, we're talking about the transitional stage from one uh, time period to another time period. And this is essentially known as the transition from Pliocene, a much warmer period on our planet Earth, to Pleistocene, which was a much cooler period. Essentially, the so-called Pleistocene period is when all of those ice ages started to occur. There were uh, 11 major ice ages, and we still don't really know why they, why they actually occurred, why they happened. And this paper suggests that it's very likely, and there's a very, very high chance that those ice ages were initiated by essentially 
these uh, sort of particles or the effect of these particles on our planet, possibly our atmosphere, or you know, something may have occurred that by the time the supernova remnants made it to our planet, they may have actually affected our planet in such a way that suddenly temperature decreased, things got really cool, and we started having these ice ages that we're going to simulate in a second by placing another Earth a little bit farther away and basically making it cool down. So it's about to cool down. I think temperature is about to drop here. It's actually just doing manually. And here you go. Here you can kind of see the ice age happening here. Not so much on the actual planet because it's going to take a little bit of time. But basically, yeah, so they suggest that these supernova, by the time that, um, you know, the particles started bombarding our planet, have um, have caused something to our atmosphere and essentially cooled it down to the point where we start having these periodic ice ages um, that may have been actually initiated by um, the supernova something like 300 light years away from us. And here we go, you can kind of see everything turning into ice and this is a true ice age happening as the Earth essentially turns into a big ice ice bowl. Okay, it didn't happen that badly, there was just ice on major continents, but this one day could happen if another one of these supernova decides to um, shower us with more of the particles. Now, we don't really know if it was Iron 60 that was responsible for this, we just know that Iron 60 is sort of the, um, uh, the metal or the isotope of a metal that is essentially uh, a giveaway signal that uh, at some point the supernova were actually... Um, affecting our planet and bombarding us with various particles. And the thing is, the idea of these uh, nearby stellar explosions um, affecting our Earth in such a dramatic fashion is not actually that new, but this is the first time we've actually seen any kind of a scientific evidence that it's very likely that the supernova remnants um, may have actually affected our planet in a more dramatic way than we can imagine. And the thing is, these, these events that um, the scientists described didn't actually happen very close to us, but nevertheless, they were not far enough that uh, it's very likely that they did have some effect, and uh, their um, proposition is that basically these effects were uh, climatic changes of major proportions. And you know what? If, if this happens again anytime soon, and it's within the vicinity of our planet, for all we know, it might cause another climate change and it might cause a lot of various unpredictable um, features on our planet that we can't even, uh, we don't even know about yet because we haven't really studied uh, the effects of supernova on planets uh, almost at all. We don't really know what the effects might be. And in the last uh, 12 or so million years, uh, we know that there were close to a dozen different supernova in the vicinity that could have actually changed the climate on our planet. Um, and because we, we know there's different periods on our planet with different climate changes that were still not explained, it's possible that these changes were actually cosmological in origin. In other words, that it was either a supernova or some other event we're not really familiar with yet that may have actually affected how our planet changed in terms of climate. Um, now, there's actually another really cool paper that was written about uh, 14 years ago, I think it was 14 years ago, in 2002, that um, calculated that um, there was a very likely an, um, combination of O and B stars, basically a binary system that had an O star and a B star, and I'm gonna show you what this looks like in a second. And I think to do this, I'm just going to zoom out here and because there's a B star that's available to us right here. It's called uh, 21 EPS CMA. I'm not entirely sure what this stands for again. And we can also place an O star around it. There's an example right here called um, uh, Tan La Certa. And these, these are actually very, very massive stars. And so what this uh, paper actually suggested is that at some point, um, these two stars passed by within about 130 light years of us and basically may have actually collided and created um, a very, very large supernova that two million um, years ago or so may have actually caused a miniature um, extinction. And here comes the supernova. Um, miniature extinction that may have actually um, destroyed some of the ocean life. And, and it may also have stripped the oz ozone layer from um, our Earth's atmosphere because the amount of energy, amount of material that's being released right now is absolutely ridiculously super high. So even within um, 100 light years or 130 light years um, away from Earth, so if this was 130 light years away, which I'm going to show you in a second how far away this is. So here's our supernova we just started and we're going to go at a distance of 130 light years where you can barely even see this. 
So right here. Uh, even at this distance, by the time the supernova gets to us uh, many, many, many thousands of years later, it will very likely be super dangerous and cause problems on our planet. But this is a paper that actually hasn't been really discussed very much because this was just a proposition and we don't really know if there is any proof to it, but we know that uh, this particular explosion, um, this supernova, may have caused what's known as a local bubble. There's actually a very big bubble of various material around our solar system that's uh, something like, I don't know, 300 light years big. It's very, very, very large. And it's caused by that, there it is, there is the supernova. It's, it was caused, caused by a supernova that happened many years ago, but we don't really know exactly how, how it was caused and what really happened. We just know that it happened at some point. Uh, but the idea that I wanted to talk about is the idea of these supernova essentially actually influencing our Earth. And we don't re even realize and we don't even know yet how exactly they influence Earth. But if we look at the correlation between the supernova um, that happened in the past that we know based on the fossil evidence, and if we look at how the climate has changed on our planet, they seem to have happened at the same time. So maybe, just maybe, we might actually have another way that the climate might change. So it's, it might not be just the um, greenhouse effect. It might not just be the fact that our sun is going to change temperature sometime in the future. But it's very likely that any kind of a supernova, even far away from us, may actually cause a serious change in climate on our planet Earth. And well, I think that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and I hope you learned something new from it. If you want to check out the paper I, I talked about, the paper from Nature uh, Magazine, it is available in the description below. Check out the link, it's right there. And if you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, make sure to also tell about this video to your friends who may like space sciences and who may like to learn more about space, universe, and everything else. Like this video if you've enjoyed watching it, and also... If you really love this channel, don't forget you can help it grow by supporting us on Patreon. The link for this is also in the description below. And thank you so much to all of you that have already supported me on Patreon or in any other way. Anyway, once again, thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate all of your support. Game you later. See you in the next video. And as always, bye-bye. And before we finish this video, let's create more fireworks. I'm going to initiate supernova in as many stars as I can before my computer melts. Let's see what happens now. Oh, there we go. Look at that. So many explosions. So many different explosions. I need to enable realistic mode here. And boom, what? here comes another one. And this is so much fun. So much fun. Anyway, thank you guys. I'll see you later. Game you later. Bye-bye.